Welcome back to the workshop, everybody. So glad you could be with me here today. Walter here at the workbench with my friend Stanley 45. The Stanley 45 is quite the piece of engineering. Considering we're talking about 1800s, a lot of machining had to be done totally by hand, no CNC, a lot of jigs and special setups, but they had to create the patterns for all of the castings. That's about it. Just about all the way through. And those patterns were made by woodworkers. So pattern making was one of the woodworking world tasks of the day. So there's a bead that you would put on like a, an apron for a table or a piece of picture frame molding or maybe you'd use it for casing or trim in a house. One of the key things about using molding planes or the Stanley 45 is the selection of your stock needs to be straight grain and you need to work only in the direction of the grain. They were the multi-tool, they were they were just amazing. They were the multi-tool of their day. You could get a set of cutters. You could have wide cutters for doing rabbiting. And then you could start getting into smaller cutters for doing plows, grooves. And then they gave you initially a set of beads, because beads was popular. And they gave you a cutter known as a tongue cutter which when matched with the groove cutter or plow, you could make tongue and groove boards. So you, you could do what's known as matching. So if you think about it, and I hope you do, you would replace one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, let's put all these in one as a plow plane, eight, and then maybe nine, ten, as many as a dozen wooden bodied planes, molding planes, with this one tool. And that was great for another reason. This appealed to the small cabinet shop or woodworker who did not have men employed, and I'm sorry ladies, but it, they basically, the men, it was a man's trade for the most part, uh, back in the 1800s. Some of the small shops did not have men that would excel at using only molding planes. You have to have a certain mindset to make moldings. Moldings was a profession. It was part of the, um, I guess you would say, it was part of the trim or the interior carpenter. He would make the moldings. So this appealed to the small shop. This also appealed later on to the hobby woodworker who wanted to just do a little something now and then. And that's why we find so many of these in estate sales and in attics. But look at the detail. Look at the detail in the castings. Every single screw had to be machined and fitted in. The bars had to be fitted in. Everything had to be fitted in such a way that they were interchangeable with other planes. They even came with auxiliary fences or skates wonder why they call them skates. You see that shape? <laughs> Looks like an old-fashioned ice skate. The skates stop you from going too deep. It's, it's like a guide. And then there is another guide here, another depth guide here. And there's one on the other body. 
It's just that they just are amazing. So I thought I'd bring it out and show you what it can do. And uh, with some practice, it, uh, it can give you that nice crisp detail that is, is it's different. It's, it's, it, there's a different look to it than when you run it through a router or through a shaper. There's no little scallop marks from the cutter. It's smooth. That's about it for today. Hope this was helpful, useful, maybe entertaining. If you liked it, give it the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And I look forward to you coming back again and we can share some other topics and talk a little bit about, I don't know, life in general. No, no, we don't want to go down that path, but basically a lot of people have suggested certain things to me about cameras and this, that, and the other thing. And uh, I may do a whole video on that because so you know what I'm working with. But most importantly, head out to your shop. Go make some shavings. Walter out.